Hey yo, what it div y'all? Let's get right into it. It's time to go ahead and showcase to you guys my lightning Glatishula Bell Monk. I, naming this is weird, but it is a lightning corner staff monk that uses a variety of skills to shock and then nuke a boss <laughs> through an immense amount of burst damage. It feels like during during my Tempest Bell windows and just honestly like removing bosses from the screen. Eventually, I imagine that the damage will neutral out a little bit better but right now it feels like i have just been ripping through everything and it makes me pretty confident in the setup that i currently have in its ability to be shown to you guys now disclaimer before we get deeper into this video this is a showcase not a build guide do not take this and go this is 100 the way that i have to play my character copy everything he does take that down take that down take that down you're allowed to don't yell at me if somebody finds something more optimal or if you realize that you don't like something because i'm telling you right now that I'm still changing this build on the day-to-day, -day, right? Like on the day-to-day, -day, I am making adjustments because I feel like, I feel like I've got it to a good point now where the only adjustments will be small little optimizations at least, as opposed to massive sweeping setups, put changes. But I haven't even gotten to see all the uniques in the game yet. So who knows what's gonna change, right? So I would be wary of that. Additionally, you know, it is early access. Things could just get nerfed and whatnot. So take this more as a idea for you to work off of and me just explaining to you how I've been able to achieve all the stuff that you've seen in my videos or if you've stopped by the stream, right? That That's how you should take this video. Quick interruption from me, myself, to remind you to like and subscribe if you're rocking with the video. And when you do subscribe to turn notifications on so you get notified when we post more here on the channel. And... Speaking of seeing more content, I do have a Twitch in the description that when I am live on, you'll be able to see what we're doing live, which might include, you know, stuff that never makes it to the video, right? So, you might want to check that out. Now, back to me. So, with that out of the way, let's actually talk about the play style of the build. <laughs> the build is pretty simple in its play style, where in bossing, for example, if you're fighting a single target, it really is just poking with storm wave until you get a good to start building up stun and putting on shocks that you can siphon off if you need to for chart for damage while looking to build up a stun or get a window to get in close and then drop the tempest slurry get the bell in there and go ham but make sure that before you go ham you'll use gathering storm to apply the debuffs and then again get your charges up for charge staff and then just send the boss to oblivion it's a pretty simple play style in single target and then in mapping it's relatively simple as well a little clunky around one edge in particular which is that my initial charge generation kind of bothers me and i think it is just because i actually do too much damage like i have actively considered nerfing one of my skills worth of damage so that i can shock a little easier so i can siphon and strike that shock for one charge right because in mapping i find that i only really need the one charge maybe two to make the charge staff strong enough to carry me through but I kill things so quickly that it has been having this problem a little bit. So I might find another way to get charges in maps, but I don't like a lot of my other options because they involve me messing with my gem setup when I finally have gotten all nine gems in a position where I feel like they add something of meaningful value. But it is shock things, siphoning strike, just like in single target to get charges. But then we're using storm wave to clear primarily and the, you know, the combination with Herald of Thunder and the yeah, not gathering storm but rather charge the staff shockwaves to clear out enemies now when we've come to the play style it's important that we actually talk about the skills themselves and how they make this work right because i did mention that there are power charges but you'll notice i it's only charge staff which is a skill that you know has an insane duration especially if you stock it with persistence like i have in my build you will end up getting incredible duration out of just a few charges and you'll just need to you know get a couple more charges every so often to make sure you can get it all the way up to the maximum which i have it at six stacks you could opt for the seventh charge i felt like the seventh charge wasn't efficient efficient enough for me because i'm not using any real spenders so we're pushing in a number up and up and up how do we get there right side mini strike gives us a charge generation Gathering Storm will always make sure that things can be shot because there's a shot ground. You can also shock through a variety of the other skills that we do damage through in order to siphon them off though. And that's one way to get your charges up and probably my favorite way. I will give the other options of Resonance plus either Combat Frenzy for Charge Staff in particular or you can use like a Mark setup to get to Mark enemies and then shock them and get the and shock or kill them and get the charge that way. There's a 
a number of different things that I've seen. Try the ones that you find that you like. See if any of them fit for you. The one that I feature in this build is the one that works for me. Once we get the charge generation working, it's charge staff time. It is our buff skill for the build. It does a good bit of damage, right? It is one, two, a lot. I think right now my gem says 13 based on its level. Uh, one to 13 flat lightning per power charge we can sit into it. So when you've consumed the total of six charges over its duration, it will in fact be a lot of damage in addition to adding in a shockwave of its own that does more damage and more stun buildup, which we are using that damage actually to apply withering touch. It's a pretty big deal for the character in terms of like the strength of my ascendancy. It's worth noting before getting to withering touch, I would consider actually using electrocute instead of withering touch there sometimes in the sense that before reality running, I hadn't actually tried having withering touch in there. And having electrocute there also just felt really good for safety purposes. So that's like something to be worth considering there, right? Then you're going to go over to your, you know, your damage because I mentioned the single target and range setups. It's worth noting that the links are not super optimized, mostly because I don't have five links everywhere and, or even six links to really like start moving everything around and playing around with it. I need more crit before I really want to invest more in Tempest Flurry because I could decide that like I like right now with what I have going on with the with the bell having rage, font of rage, and magnified effect, where and that just provides me utility and re regular damage, but I might want to invest heavier in the damage of the bell at some point. Tempest Fury right now is crescendo, martial tempo, and close combat, but I might take out crescendo based on some stuff I've seen about potentially just skipping the, the last slower hit in exchange for more attack speed, which is more triggers of bell, more triggers of charge staff more stacks of everything else which then means i might put rage there instead who knows right just testing some stuff out or gonna look at like super critical going forward or rising tempest if i can find a way to fit in like a cold gem at some point in the future because of a different problem that i managed to solve who knows and then also there is Stormwave, our clear skill which if you notice that it is linked with conduction that is to make sure that i get shocks with it when i need to for the purpose of like when i'm poking at like a tankier enemy I get a shock stuck on it so I can quickly poke it and get back to work, right? Like that's that's in there for me. Now, that's the actual active skill setups. And then we'll talk a little bit more about the spirit skills um, in detail later. But it is worth noting that Herald of Thunder is just a nice extra clear bonus that also allows me to sustain and get extra damage to innervate and shock siphon. Huge fan of it. Has a really nice interaction with Wind Dancer and Ghost Dance as well, specifically Wind Dancer. I'll talk about in a bit, but know that we are using Wind Dancer and Ghost Dance as our last two gem slots because they are defensive core, but that'll get covered later on. Now that I've told you how the skill setup functions, we need to talk about the actual Ascendancy Aquila Chayula, why I play it. Besides just, I love the Ascendancy, right? Not just like numerically, but the theming. It's always been a fan of it. It elicited such a positive reaction for me from the trailers that I straight up never considered a different ascendancy for my first character. Never, never didn't care what came out about what was stronger. It literally just, it spoke to me in a way that other ascendancies did not And now with that in mind, I've not had the time to play it and think about how to scale it compared to, especially its biggest competitor, Invoker. You know, it's, it's a bigger brother, if you will, on the same class doing the build that I'm doing a potentially better, right? And I don't particularly disagree with this claim that the build could be stronger if I put it on an invoker. I do not think the gap is as big as people make it out to be, though. I think the, the gap that people describe grossly misstates the value that this ascendancy does bring to the character. And so as a result, we're going to talk about Acolyte of Chayula. I am currently ascended with Waking Dream, Lucid Dreaming, and Reality Rending. I will be going Chayula's Gift as my fourth ascendancy note when we get there. And let's talk about what all that does for me. One. Waking Dream and Lucid Dreaming give us the skill Into the Breach and then double its effect in duration. Into the Breach is a skill that um, creates this tiny, barely vi visible purple circle around you that creates these red, blue, and purple flames that you've probably been seeing in the footage that I either haphazardly or intentionally have been walking into. And that, that haphazardly or intentionally piece right there is the biggest problem with this skill, I'm going to be honest. Not in the sense that, like, oh, it's unplayable or anything, but more so just, like, it's hard to evaluate the skill strength, this skill strength when it can be that inconsistent. At its peak, you can have a moment where you're doing 140% of your damage as extra chaos. That usually doesn't happen. I have been doing my math about how I feel about it with the assumption that I have maybe two to three flames at a given time that matters. 
and that's been pretty reasonable for me so far and it, it's still like you know 28 to 42 percent damage is extra which is a lot like that's a lot of damage but this is not the only reason that you use into the breach i have found that the leech that it provides is absolutely insane the red flames leech you life and the blue flames leech you mana which give you a ton of sustain 14 percent each over the course of one second and that means I have a way to sustain my life if I'm taking chip damage while walking around. It means I have a way to sustain my mana as I'm clearing or like if I'm just, you know, mixing the boss real quick and I step out for a little bit to grab a thing while I'm just, you know, kiting around. My mana comes back a little bit faster so I can get in there and maintain my flash charges. You can also combine this with Leech to have a full on effect of like having decent sustain of your mana with very little effort, right? Like I have an accidental Leech um, amount of Leech and it's working just fine even though I'm doing very little actual physical damage because I'm able to crack off the mana sustain from Into the Breach. Huge fan of that. Then, the last additional really random bonus to this is that Into the Breach is a spirit skill, right? In the sense that it is in fact reserved and permanently active, but it does not consume spirit and therefore does not incur penalties from using a variety of supports such as Clarity or Herbalism or Cannibalism which is very nice because it will get five sockets when it's fully socketed and you can just fill it up with supports that get passive stats but would take more spirit if they're put on all their skills. Huge fan. Outside of Into the Breach, we also have Reality Rending. This is just mathematically averaging out to about 19.25% damage to Chaos, ignoring the ability for it to trigger all three of the lines on a single hit. This math assumes that it will only trigger one or the other and not both, I could do that extra math, but I think that's just for you to understand that that's an unlikely possibility, but it could technically do it. It therefore raised the average value case of the ascendancy slightly higher. But 19.25% damage of chaos is perfectly fine to me. It's a two-pointer. Having a line that says basically almost 20% damage is kind of nuts. Not exactly 20% damage. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's pretty nuts either way. And then the plan is I lose gifts so that I can gear up my chaos res easier, as well as potentially find a way to lean into what would be considered like a damage shift strategy, right? Where I shift damage off of my health, off of like this, for example, into chaos to get tankier against other sorts of damage is what I'm thinking about, but I haven't seen any knives to enable this. This is just me kind of coping that it does exist. Just, you know, thinking out what I'm thinking, right? So altogether, this ascendancy gives me a large amount of sustain, about 35 to 50% extra chaos on the low side, right? I do have clips where bosses get baked by like six plus flames. And, it, you know, that means I have over almost 100% total uh, as extra from that plus rent reality running. And it's insane. And then also my chaos res gearing is going to get so much smoother and potentially open up a new defensive avenue. It is worth noting this ascendancy also does have two extra sets of nodes, which the darkness section, I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail because I haven't tested it. But I also just know that it looks bad. There's some tweaking in number two that needs to be talked about there. But I have mentioned in the previous video that I was looking at looking into the mana, the, the mana, yes, like leech combination. And the reason I opted out of it is that I did find a different way to sustain my ES. Had I not, I would have still gone that way and made some skill changes. So I want to recommend to you a quick version of what I would do if I wanted to work in that ascendancy. And it is just to switch Stormwave for Windblast and get a second fizz weapon and a tree swap to get rid of your lightning damage nodes in favor of more physical nodes such that wind blast will then provide you good stun as well as giving you a real source of fizz like good fizz damage that you can then leech off of in addition to the damage that you'll leech off of while beating the brakes off of a boss and combining the two of those together actually lets you then use a good amount of leech to combine with the blue flames that will also leech your mana into es and therefore give you some really nice recovery the reason I opted out of this though is because I actually just want to keep my recharge and I found that uh, reality rending and childhood skips seemed a little bit easier for me to make perfect use of, but I just wanted to like pay my note to what the leech stuff could have been. Now, let's compare this to Invoker very quickly because this is big, the biggest competitor in the space and I think that it's very obvious why Invoker is so strong, right? 10% is extra lightning, 40% damage from a bound avatar. Like, it is really strong. And then also, Sunder My Enemies potentially, but because of the weird way that resistances and penetration and like res reduction work right now, people have not really decided if they think that Sunder My Enemies is better or worse yet. Um, especially compared to the fact that you could just take the setup for spirit generation and evasion converting to PDR, or you could take the meta energy increase, the meta skill energy increase, 
for better trigger setups, right? There's a lot of options in what Invoker can do as well. That makes it a very, very strong competitor. But when I look at the two ascendancies, that that become the difference is not their damage. They both feel like numbers wise, like Invoker is directly a 50 50. 5-ish percent damage increase, ignoring potentially Sunder my enemies, just because, again, don't know what people will actually think about that yet and how to calculate the exact value of that compared to just taking pen nodes and whatnot. We'll see. But they seem to be in the ballpark of 55 to 60% more damage each with, you know, Acolyte and Trailer having higher spikes, but a little bit of inconsistency in his playstyle compared to the static value that Invoker provides. And the actual difference between the Ascendancies and their defensive value and other utilities, right? Invoker giving you that large amount of spirit or Invoker giving you the ability to scale evasion as a way to not have to deal to give you PDR is incredibly unique. And that's its own value, right? And then Aklaya Chayula provides that sustain, but also, you know, gives me the ability to get max chaos rest, which can open as of its own thing. And I think what you val like that's where the difference between the two ascendancies really comes from. If you do it with the math, you know, hey, look, let me know or whatever, we can talk about it. But I just wanted to give a full case as far as like why Aklaya Chayula is actually not as bad as people are making it out to be when compared to Invoker. I think Invoker is just really straightforward. Now, there is one thing that I have to touch on because. It takes a little bit of different scaling to get value out of the Acolyte of Sheila, right? So let's get ready to talk about that. That thing we need to talk about is scaling the character, right? Specifically, how damage and extra damage works in this game. Especially if you're a POE1 veteran, you are familiar with the old way that conversion works, which no longer does that. Conversion in this game that works like conversion in pretty much every other ARPG at this point, which is that you no longer care about anything that scales like percent damage for what the damage originally came from. It's all about where the damage is going. So we are doing lightning damage and gaining it as, as extra chaos. That damage that we're gaining as chaos is not affected by my percent lightning damage, but it is affected by percent chaos damage. It is not affected by me pending lightning resistance, but if I could pin chaos resistance, it would be affected there. You see what I'm getting at here? And so this realization means that I have to think of some other ways to scale the character besides just relying on pure lightning damage scaling. And that's fine. I'm willing to do that because it also means that I can scale physical damage should I ever want to switch to those other skills, right? There's a method for this. And it's by relying on attack damage, melee damage, damage with quarter staves, crit, shock magnitude, wither as a great layer because we are doing chaos damage, I can apply wither pretty comfortably. That's where we're headed, right? We can go in that direction and then we still can take lightning damage because it does make it easier for us to shock things when we're not using gathering storm to do it and because it does still scale a portion of my damage but it's just with the acknowledgement that it won't scale the chaos portion of the damage and that's like the major difference that we're going to have to be aware of when we think about how we scale compared to an invoker and this makes some differences in our changes or our skill build now in terms of other things that could scale the character, right? I did mention crit, and you guys have heard my skill setup so far. It's something I am thinking about is a way to get more spirits. I can consider a way to get like elemental invocation plus eye of winter for bursting on bosses or something, but I'm not entirely sure yet, right? It's just something, it's one of the things that I've been thinking about because it would be a lot of crit chance and it might be a thing that I can pull off as I figure out better ways to get things, do get things done or things feeling right. Who knows? I'm gonna have to test all that later on. But that's one of the ways you could, I could add some more scaling to the character. Really just I'm workshopping more ways to get good crit because I'm crit leaned at the moment, but without like all the crit in the world. And if I could get my crit up, I'd feel a lot better about it. Now, let's talk about the character survivability, right? Because, you know, scaling offensively is one thing, but we have to scale defensively as well. And in doing so, I've realized that evasion is insane. Um, a friend of mine put me on to this one. Shout out to Cataclysm if you're watching this, right? He put me on to the fact that evasion actually feels really good because A, it's really easy to get evasion to the point where it does something. Like for example, I'm not as far invested as it is. He is because I'm hybrid, but he was telling me that he has a setup for his character, not this exact build. He's a ranger one of He's saying like his character has so much evasion that he actually makes use of acrobatics and still has roughly the same evade chances I have, which is insane. So evasion stacks up really easily. And we are in, you know, this is PLE too. Areas are not near, not as dense and attacks are not as spammy. So we're getting the ability to actually rely on evasion strength of get stopping those big single hits, which I have noticed, right? 
I've noticed that I've evaded a lot more of the damage that I probably would have died to in POV1 just because of the amount of things that would have hit me along the way or tried to hit me and messed up the entropy counter. So, huge fan of evasion. And we're going to go hybrid because that way I get to still boost my EHP a little bit since I'm not in Invoker. I don't have a way to convert evasion to like raw damage or I don't think I can really lean into acrobatics, but I do need a way to be able to support my... I do need a way for my self to support against like spell damage or just larger hits in general that i can't mitigate quite frankly so that's why for hybrid spectral war makes that really easily easy i might even consider self defuge mask but i have to like do some math on if i think that's worth it compared to other options in addition to this we are then using wind dancer and ghost dance as i mentioned earlier wind dancer provides a shitload more evasion and ghost dance provides es recovery based on my evasion they are a perfect combination of reservation gems Additionally, Wind Dancer, when you get hit, does have an attack. That is why it is supported with Blind and Maim to then debuff enemies that do get a hit through so that I can um, deal with the problem, right? Also worth noting that that hit can then also trigger Herald of Thunder and kill them sometimes, which is really funny. It's so nice when it happens. In addition to all of that, we have the ES on kill from Shock Siphon on our Herald of Thunder, and then we have the HP Leech from the Red Flames of Chayula. And that's currently my sustained setup. We're working on fixing resistances and again, looking for a source of damage shift potentially. Who knows, right? Now, before we get into like talking about what the rest of the character like in game, because I need to, you know, show you guys the passive tree and whatnot, I need to, you know, make a quick note here, which is that there are some places of growth that I'm eyeing up. And that's why, you know, like I said, it's a showcase, not a perfected character, which is one figuring out how I'm going to get my crit up, which is some mixture of needing a better weapon. Like I know that weapons can roll with up to 5%, like almost 5% base crit on them. And that would actually do a lot for my crit chance. I know it would. And so I have to see if I can get that, you know, see about getting some other gear for crit, maybe like helmet crit chance, for example, who knows? And just generally speaking, like gearing overall, although it's starting to get, it's starting to get there, but it's not insane yet. You don't have to look through the uniques. I know I've seen some uniques, like I'll just put it out there. If you're looking, if you're looking at this character as a basis for say like a Falling Thunder or Flicker Strike character or something like that, um, keep in mind the, there's a unique in the game called Serpent's Egg, seems to be kind of rare, but it does give you an additional charge generated per charge. And that can be insane for setups that actually need more charges, right? Things like that. And so the, not, the lack of knowledge around uniques in the game is one of the things that I do need to look into. But one unique that I do know about that I should point out is these the gloves that they teased early on that give electrocute buildup. That seems pretty strong. I did try it, like I said earlier, I tried electrocute and neural overload on charge that for a while. And it actually was a good web of safety. So I would not be surprised if I put that on say like Herald of Thunder or something else in the future because electrocute is good. And so the gloves might be worth it, but I might want different stats on my gloves instead of like giving all that up for that. Who knows, right? Still figuring it out in that regard. Might even consider a shield swap to like block for panic defensives. There's a lot of things to consider ways to like grow the character from here, right? So like I said, if you have ideas for any of these things, by the way, comments. Like genuinely, drop them in the comments. Come by the stream, drop them there. Come, like go to the Discord, drop them there. Wherever you want to drop it at, I will see it. And like even if I don't reply to it, I will see it. I do read every comment uh, because I do want to see like what you guys are saying. Try to make my build as best as I can, right? All that good stuff. Now, before we transition over to the game. Heads up, if you want to play this character, you already have the character leveled. I do not have a leveling section for you. Um, as I have not tested enough leveling, especially with the patch that just went live overnight. <laughs> I, I have not leveled since to like test how things should exactly work in there. I just kind of did what I did and it worked out just fine. And my previous videos about this character will show you a state of the character uh, towards the end of part one of the campaign and at the end of like end of the campaign as a whole that you can look at to see how I like got it done. And with that said, let's go in game to like look at the rest of the character in full. Okay. Now that we're in game, I can show you the last little bit here. Character, we're currently level 79. We're chilling. You see decent like life ES, not insane defenses on its end of people who have like a lot more ES than me, especially, but we're figuring it out. You know, we're making it happen, do what it do. You'll notice the evasion is pretty good. 66%. I want to get it higher. Gonna need better bases for that and better rolls. The resins are coming along. We need a little bit more chaos res before then I'll be really happy with taking Chilo's gift and really getting value out of it. That's just more of a cure thing though, right? And working through that. Sadly, no extra spirit. It is what it is. Let's talk about the passage tree first. I'll show you guys the gear. Let's see this passage tree. It's 
as in the mobile Linux guide that'll be in the description. But just a general tree path thing, a lot for crit and charge stuff. We don't take this charge because it is a total of four points that I wasn't sure if I needed to pay or not. Because I'm not using a big payoff skill for that. So with that, we're just, you know, pathing for more crit stuff. It's worth noting that nodes like this here, they give you crit damage when consuming a power charge recently. That works off of eating things with charge staff. Might, or like charge infusion even, which is something that I tested as well at one point that I might retest again later when I have better just systems for generating, maintaining charges, etc. As well as maybe even adding in a way to generate and maintain consistent frenzies in that type of setup. But again, things to test in the future, right? Things that like take more investment to work on, more spirit, etc. And then we're just pathing for speed, crit, quarter staff nodes, crit, attack speed, attack or attack speed, attack damage, right? And some evasion. And I'll probably path for more evasion from here. You'll actually see that I have like the lightning nodes because I do do a substantial amount of lightning damage, and these are just still really strong nodes even after the changes. But if I need to make some changes, you know, these are probably some of the first nodes to go. And this is spectral ward. This is where subterfuge mask is, which is why I haven't taken it yet. But I think I'm in the process of, you know, coming around down here. Or I might start working my way up. Because up here in the next, like, seven levels or so, I can get more crit chance, which is the thing I really need. As well as coming around top here to pure chaos. And even wither away. Which wither away is base. Wither kind of sucks. It's only 5%. 6% with the node there. But the ability to, do like, have the 20% wither on my wither that's being applied by charge staff is a big deal. And so that might be something I come up for as well, or potentially like anoint into, but I think I want to anoint something down here. Haven't fully decided yet. There's a lot to consider with a lot of this stuff. Like this node right here is like really what I'm thinking about or something, right? There's a lot going on here that I will need to take some more time and fully think out, right? Then in terms of gear, currently using a relatively big stick that I corrupted because I was um, feeling frisky. It's a decent stick. It's a very good PDPS stick. Like. It's like a little over 400 PDPS, but it has no crit, and that's its biggest problem. Uh, just getting some base crit would be pretty big for the character. Because as you can see, when I pull up the skill menu on, say, like Tempest Slurry, you'll notice that the crit chance that I have here is only 28%. And I need to get that higher so that I can lean into, like, other crit supports or ways to get his crit chance really juiced up. And that might require things such as Tempest or Charge Infusions for the 15% more but I have charges, which I'll then need to think of a slightly more consistent way to keep my charges active for that, etc. Right? Where, you know, that's one way that I have to think about the problem, right? Additionally, the rest of the gear is pretty normal though. Like life resistances. This chest is meant to be a defenses chest, but I ended up rolling one that had a lot more life than defenses, so I rock with it. But you could end up with some chests. Like I have other good chests lying around that I've been like meaning to try. Or is it this? Where did I put it? I had a good chest that I was like thinking about using. This one here is insane amount of evasion. Yes, little life though, unfortunately. The slams on the prefix were kind of unfortunate. So I ended up not using this, but like we're, that's what we're going for. We're going for good evasion, yes. Preferably life or like hybrid life piece on there and the good resistance and suffixes. And that's kind of like the general idea for the chest piece. Going for the rest of the gears, just you know, life, yes. I think I want gloves with attack speed. I want helmet with crit chance. And then who knows what I'm going to get my accessories to do. And boots are decent, you know, just generic stats all around the board. Charm wise, I'm running stun currently, in case you were curious. I think stun is good. I think you could also absolutely go like freeze or bleed or whatever. Curious to see how people pan this decision out as like we get further and further in. And I think that covers most of the, the rest of the character, right? You've seen it in here. By the way, I just realized, you know, in case you're curious and you stick around for a little bonus thing, this is Gathering Storm. It is a perfect charge skill. I have to get used to that to leave the shot ground, but that's how we can then siphon and get to work. Anyways, I think that's everything for me. Thank you guys for watching. And just a reminder, if you want to see anything that's live, I will be streaming. Um, not always, but like, you know, I stream in the evenings. That's like a general time period. I'll probably stream even more than just the evenings, but it's like the weekend and whatnot. But during the week, it's during the evenings when I get the chance uh, based on like my work schedule and whatnot. And, you know, if you have any questions, comments if you rock with the video like you know subscribe to the notifications on all that good stuff thank you guys for watching i know it's been a bit of a long one but i appreciate you guys for it and see you in the next one take care